Today we're going to be talking about vectors. Okay, vectors represent a physical quantity, and the important thing about vectors is they have two characteristics. Okay, is vectors have a magnitude and a direction. Okay, magnitude, physics kids always get a little worried when they see this word. Magnitude just means it has a number, it has a value. Okay, so it has a size, a number, a value, and it has a direction. We normally represent vectors with arrows so that you can see, you know, which direction it goes, and then we'll, we'll write that number for its magnitude. We're going to talk about three cases in combining vectors. Okay, when we're combining vectors, we can do it when those vectors are parallel, perpendicular, and at odd angles. So the first one, you know, if we're looking at vectors that are parallel, okay, parallel means they're, you know, going in the same direction. Okay, these two vectors are parallel, and if I gave them each a magnitude, like say a 5 newton vector and a 2 newton vector, okay, we have these two different vectors. They're going in the same direction. They both have a magnitude. We can see where they're going. If I wanted to combine these, because they're going in the same direction, they would add together. Okay, so combining these vectors, I have a 5 newton vector and a 2 newton vector. I get it's 2, and I have a new vector that is 7 newtons. Okay, and because it's a vector, I can't just tell you what it is. I have to tell you its magnitude and its direction. Okay, it's a 7 newton vector, and it's going in the same direction that those were. All right? The next way we're going to look at it, it's also parallel, but what if they're parallel and they're going in opposite directions? Okay, we have a 5 newton vector and a 2 newton vector, but they're going in opposite directions. Okay, they're still parallel, they're still in the same plane, okay, but they're going in opposite directions. So now, if vectors go in opposite directions, we can subtract them. So we look at this, and I have 5 minus 2, and I get a 3 newton vector. So I've given you its magnitude. Now I need to figure out its direction. And because my 5 newton vector was the larger one, that's the way that's going to win out. Okay, I have a 3 newton vector that's going in that direction. Mr. Childers, does it matter if you do the 5 and then the 2, or the 2 and then the 5, or is it okay either way? It, it's okay either way, as long as you are representing your direction. You know, maybe if I did 2 minus 5 or 5 minus e either way, I might look at that in positive and negative, and, and those have directions as far as physics is concerned. But if I'm giving you my arrow, I'm letting you know its direction. Okay, next thing we're going to look at is what if those vectors are perpendicular? Okay, perpendicular means they're at right angles from each other, so if one's going up, maybe the other one is going to the right. Okay, and if I have vectors of 6 newtons and 8 newtons, okay, we have to figure out a way to combine these. And it doesn't work the same way we've done before, where we're just adding or subtracting. We have to find another way to combine these. Okay, and the way we combine vectors that are perpendicular is using triangles. We're going to have to set these up into a triangle and figure out what the third side is. Okay, now the very important thing when we're setting these up is we have to set them up tip to tail. Okay, we have to set them up so that we know where that resultant is going. And I'll show you what I mean. If I have an up vector that is 6, okay, I'm going to take the tip of that vector, the arrow side, okay, and I'm going to set it up to the tail of the other one. Okay, so I set this up tip to tail, and now I have a 6 newton vector and an 8 newton vector. I can set it up like a triangle, and what I'm trying to find is the hypotenuse. Okay, now, hopefully from all our nice math classes and geometry classes, we, we know from this, okay, we can solve for the hypotenuse using the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, we have a being side 1, okay, b being side 2, okay, and c being your hypotenuse.